What's up guys, welcome back to IT Security Labs. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to collect your PFSense logs and actually send them to rsyslog, which is our server. rsyslog actually is uh, running in my lab right now in Ubuntu, right here. rsyslog allows us to collect all of our logs from different places and then we can create filters for those logs then we can actually view them and see what's going on in our environment. In this lab, I will be showing you everything that you need to know to get your logs from anywhere into RC's log. Then we can ship them to Graylog and Grafana for viewing. So you can end up with graphs like this one. I'll be focusing mostly on my PFSense firewall and there are three types of logs that I'm interested in. I'm interested in uh, my Snort IDS IPS logs. I want to see all the IDS and IPS logs. I want to see my proxy server logs in Grafana, which is this graph right here that you're looking at. Then I also want to view firewall logs. I made a video on my channel. I will link it in the description. This this is a graph that you can see for your firewall logs and on, on, on what's happening, like total firewall events. You can have a baseline created here. You can see top traffic by interface. So these are the logs that I'm interested in visualizing. Remember, the main goal is not to end up with graphs. Graphs help, but collecting logs is the most important thing. That's why I decided to separate my systems where my PFSense generates the logs. My RCS log server on Ubuntu gets all the logs and filters those logs by category. In this case, I'll be having snort logs, firewall logs, and squid logs. Then after that, I'm sending those logs to Graylog to parse those logs even more and so I can actually classify the logs and see what's going on and create uh, even more filters. And in the end, I can grab those logs and put them in Grafana and end up with graphs like this. This is all open source and free. So you can do this at your own time and I'll be showing you exactly how to do it. It's very actually uh, interesting to do and it doesn't take a lot of time. So without wasting time, let's go ahead and install our RCS log. Again, that's our log server that just grabs all the, lo the logs and classifies my logs. So I'll be showing you exactly how to do that right now. So the first thing that we need to understand is our logs are coming from PFSense here and we need to grab those logs, which I'll show you later and send them to our RCS log server. What is say RCS log is an open source program for transferring log messages over IP network to Unix and Linux systems. So that's what it does. You grab logs from one end and send them to another one. And the good thing for us is it comes pre-installed in Ubuntu and my lab is running on VMware. So what you just simply do is create a new Ubuntu server in VMware, which I'll be showing you right now, new virtual machine. In, in my lab, I just want to create a new virtual machine. You might have templates of Ubuntu already set up, which is always great. But in this case, let's call this RCS log uh, two, because I already have one set up in my lab. Then we can just hit next, choose the host, select the storage area um, over here. That is next. Then guest OS, Linux. Uh, then here you wanna just do Ubuntu 64. It's that simple. If you do next, customize hardware. You wanna give this machine enough CPU. So say, let's give it four memory. If you're running this in production, you want to give it a little bit more, but for testing purposes, just give it eight. On the hard disk, that's where uh, storage is very important. You can give this one, say, 200 for testing, or maybe 500 gigs if you have a lot of logs in your network. Then for the network, I want to choose um, my VM network. And OK. Connect. Then uh, for DVD, 
I already downloaded Ubuntu, so this is just basics of how to install Ubuntu in whatever platform you're using. I'm showing you in VMware here. So I'm browsing my data store and I have an ISO folder. In here, I have Ubuntu 16 server. Okay. And from here, you can see connected power on and next and finish. If I power on that machine now, the rcslog server that I just created, I'll be taken through the steps of how to install Ubuntu. So if I do power on, this will just install Ubuntu using the normal steps on how you install Ubuntu. So here it is starting up right now. And you can follow the defaults here. I'm not going to waste your time and mine showing you how to install Ubuntu. If you need to know how to install it in VMware, just uh, do a simple how to install Ubuntu in VMware. Once you install Ubuntu using the defaults, um, allow, make sure to allow SSH. So once your Ubuntu installation is complete, go ahead and SSH into your machine. And as you can see here, this is my Ubuntu server. I just went ahead and uh, opened the terminal and SSH into it. Then after you SSH into it, the first thing that you want to test is to make sure that rsyslog is already installed. And like I said, it comes pre-installed on Ubuntu. So if we do an rsyslog negative v, it should tell me what version I'm running. So this confirms that it's running. It's up and running. If you install Ubuntu like I showed you here, you should have rsyslog already installed. The next thing that you need to do is just start rsyslog. So you do an rsyslog start I mean, system control rsyslog st start, and this should start the service. As you can see, it's asking me for my password. So rsyslog should actually be running right now. And if you want it to start at startup every time, you just run this command, system control enable rsyslog, and it will enable the service for you. So once you verify that you have rsyslog, you start the service and you enable it for to start up at startup you want to make sure that if you have a firewall that's running on your server you want to open that we'll be using two ports 514 and 5140 for tcp and udp i like to have both of those open so this is the command that you run and ufc allow 514 in this case it's udp then we do the same command but with TCP and 540, as you can see, our rules has been created. Verify that we are listening for logs on those two ports that we specified. We just run netstat and if we do enter, you can see that we are actually listening on this port and this port. And the reason why we have our grep 514 is because 514 is here and there. There you go. This server is now ready to accept logs from PFSense. So in this next session, we'll go to our PFSense, tell our PFSense to forward all the logs that we need to this syslog server. Now that our syslog server is set up, you can go ahead and also tell that server to only listen on specific host. You should actually maybe do that. But um, let's move on and I'll show you how to tell PFSense to send all the logs that you need to that syslog server. Then I'll show you how to create a filter on the syslog server so that you can see all those logs from PFSense. So the first thing that you need in PFSense is make sure that you have your snort running and squid running. There's a lot of uh, guys that will show you how to quickly set this up. Then also um, any other services that you need. In this case, we want snort and squid logs and also firewall logs in our syslog server. The way I installed squid is I just went to package manager available options and right here I searched for squid and squid was here now that I installed it it's not here of course but hit install that's all you need to do once you install it you go to services you see squid proxy server and the first thing you need to do is enable the proxy server of course I left everything in the default and then the interfaces that I wanted to proxy were the LAN and my lab and also the loopback. I don't want the WAN because that's a lot of traffic. Then uh, of course I enabled uh, 
DHCP lookup. That's optional. You don't have to do that. Then I'm putting my proxy in transparency mode. What this means is I'm proxying all the traffic coming from the LAN and I'm not in, uh, telling every client on my computer who the proxy server is. I'm just proxying every single bit of traffic that passes through. Then uh, after that, if you want to do HTTPS or SSL interception, you can check this box. But what that means is you need a certificate on every client to be able to intercept this traffic. Otherwise, everything will not work and it will show as untrusted. And in a later video, I might show you how to do that. But you pretty much install a certificate on your uh, PFSense and put that certificate on every client that you want to intercept. I've done this before. It's actually easy. It's just a matter of getting the certificate to the clients. Then after that, you choose the interfaces that you want to intercept. Then you enable logging. Most of this you leave to the default. The interesting part is you need to go to advanced and you need to add this line here. What this will do is it will create a folder called squid log dot log. This is very important because without this line, your squid proxy logs will not actually be shipped together with all the other PFSense logs. So this is a trick that most people will get stuck with. What you need to add is access underscore log, system log, colon local nine. It doesn't really matter what local you call it. Just call it a local that's not already existent here. And then dot info and call it squid right here. And I'll be showing you what this folder will look like in our RCS log in a couple minutes here. After that, just hit save. The next thing that we need to do is just tell this firewall now to send all the logs to our RCS log. So if you go to status, system logs, then settings, you wanna go all the way down here, check remote syslog, actually check uh, enable remote logging here, then remote log server, you wanna specify the remote log server here in this format. As you can see, I'm sending mine to 192.168.5.57 and 51.42 5114. After that, specify which logs. In my case, I want everything. Then I'll hit save right here. Once our PFC setup is done, we want to go back to our syslog in our R syslog server and create what we call templates. In our case, we're going to actually create a wildcard template. And this is how our syslog organizes the logs. And we're going to tell our server that any input that sends logs to us automatically generate a template and also put those logs in a central uh, organized way. And those logs will actually be in different folders, in different locations, in different files. That's very important. And our template looks like this. As you can see here, we can go and this is how the format it takes. It says a template name, then the text, property, more text, and actually more text here, and the options that you want. To create, so to create our template, we just have to go and edit this file right here, the config file, one more time, and add our text, which is this one right here. So you want to make sure that this custom template is actually provided in there. And also, you want to show that uh, this is also in there. I showed you earlier, but it's uh, but it's already set up here. So what you want to do is set up a custom template. So you just edit this file. And so right after your TCP, you want to copy and paste that uh, command that I just showed you right here. This, this custom template. And in my lab, it's, it's right down here. As you can see. And this is how you dynamically create log uh, folders and classify your logs based on where they're coming from. And in my case, I also went ahead and edited these allowed host. I'm listening from my PFSense, which is 192.168.5.1, both on TCP and UDP. That's very important. So you can add this line here, or you can listen to everybody and anything. I only want to listen to my firewall for now. So I added this allowed host line right here. And I'll have it in the 
description as well you can copy and paste it in here and you'll be good to go so after that is done we just escape and save to test that our configuration file editing actually worked we just have to run this command here and if you get any errors here you know that you need to go and fix it but as you can see mine actually seems to be okay after verifying that my config is okay i can just restart rsyslog by system control restart rsyslog and as you can see it's actually working i can check the status for my rsyslog And as you can see, it's running and I don't have any errors. So make sure that you run system control status rsyslog. You might see some errors here. Let me know in the comments if you do, but this is all we have right here. So rsyslog actually saves the logs in this location right here. Var log, remote logs, one and, and in, in this case, it will create a file for my IP address, for my PFSense. I know it's 192.168.5.1. So this is the lo location that it will store these logs. So if I go to CD var log remote logs 192.168.5.1, I'll see my logs. So what, what you can do is you can replace this with your IP address of the host that your logs are coming from. If I go in there, I should be able to see that I have all my logs coming in right here. For example, my, I know that I have DHCP client logs. In fact, let's take a look at those. Let's tell DHCP dot log. Those are all the DHCP requests happening in my lab right now. As you can see, these are the computers and things that are requesting all um, DHCP from my lab. So I'm getting all the logs from my PFSense coming to my RSYS log from all this setup that I quickly show, showed you. Uh, let's look at our um, snort.log. And as you can see, I have my snort.log over there as well. It's, so for me to see my squid logs one more time and make sure that they're coming in, I can just do it. I can just do a tail squid log, squid1.log. And that's what uh, my Squid logs look like, and as you can see, I have some uh, interesting logs coming in right now. And these actually are just coming in from PFSense as they come in. These are the logs that we will be using to create a graph. This one. So these are the same logs as right here that are creating this graph that we have here. Next video, I'll show you how to get your logs from the syslog server into gray log for indexing and creating uh, classifying the data and creating filters and all that then in the end we just have the graphs so guys it's very simple to set up to get your logs to come into uh, rsys log it's a very simple setup so install ubuntu forward them here that's it make sure to subscribe for my next video where i'll be showing you how to grab these logs from here all the way straight into gray log and create grafana dashboards from that